turn off your camera. We ask for cameras to be turned off just because sometimes that can be a little distracting during the presentation. The session is being recorded and there will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. We ask that you please do not submit questions during the presentation. We'll have plenty of time at the end to take those questions both via chat and um, by video as well. As you can see on your screen, those are those buttons that you might need to turn off your camera on the right or turn your microphone on and off on your right as well. The Virginia Enterprise Zone program consists of 45 zones throughout the state of Virginia. Most of those zones are in Southwest and Southside Virginia with some zones also in the Tidewater Eastern Shore area. We have zones as far east as Zone 26, which is Accomack in Northampton County, and as far west as Wise County, which is Zone 52. Um, I'm Kate Pickett Irving. I'm one of the program administrators for the program. Um, just as a reminder, Mandy was hired in May of last year. She's been here for a year now. And so we have this uh, split between us. Um, most of you know who to contact as your primary contact, but you can contact either one of us and we will make sure that we get one of us gets back to you. I also want to introduce our program manager, Tori McGowan. He's the program manager for DHCD, who is also on this webinar. First, we wanted to show you some draft data from that grant year 2023 data. Um, we had 16.25 million in program funds. We received 182 applications with over $15.2 million requested. And that is a 28% increase in applications and a 36% increase in fund requests, which was really exciting. We were very happy about. We had 145 investment grants with about $13.167 uh, million dollars requested and 41 job creation grants with two million thirty four thousand dollars requested and we'll have those numbers firmed up once we get that money dispersed and out to those grantees the next slide is a timeline of what our year looks like. As you all know, our grant program is a little different than others because the grantees receive the grants after getting that final placed in service document or after creating those jobs. So um, you can see that January and March, that's when we do that qualification determination. We're helping companies figure out if they're qualified, if they meet those eligibility requirements. We are helping them um, apply by getting those applications figured out and helping them to um, get their local zone administrators. That's also when we're traveling and having our virtual how to qualify webinars and trainings. April 1st is when our grant applications are due. We did a deadline this year because we had that funding that we wanted to make sure that we got out the door and we were excited to have so here. Grant application reviews happen between April and June in our department, and on June 30th, those funds are dispersed, and I just realized that says dispersed, so my apologies, I thought I caught that um, edit. I will make sure to get to that um, later today, but they're dispersed at the end of June, and that's when the company receives their grant dollars. July 15th is when these annual reports are due from the local zone administrators, which we'll be going over today. And then September 30th, we have renewal applications due. We have so many renewals due this year. We already had a lot of localities that needed to renew, but then when we added on top um, the legislation that was passed in the General Assembly this year, we have um, uh, quite a bit more uh, of renewals. Um, in October, the state annual report is due to the General Assembly. That is a report that um, we put together using your local zone reports and our data from the portal where those applications are submitted. And then at the beginning of November, that's when we receive those boundary and amend 
amendment incentive application, excuse me, boundary and incentive amendment applications from the local zone administrators. We start processing those and those go up through the chain here to be approved. The end of the grant year is the end of the calendar year, of course. So any of those businesses that receive their final placed in service documents in 2024 or create new jobs above that four job threshold in 2024 will be eligible for grant year 2024 grants, uh, which will be due 25. Slide shows the, um, the statute that has the annual reporting requirement. It's part of the Virginia code. It's an admin requirement. We just want to throw that in there so you can see that it's a requirement for all localities to submit this annual report. If for some reason you are having trouble getting the information you need for the annual report, you have turnover in your office, you have something going on and you need accommodations or you need our assistance, please reach out to us. Um, we are really accommodating and we are happy to do that, but we just need that communication um, so that we can do that. We are going to be posting this webinar, but also the PowerPoint to the webinar. Um, this is what your CAMS page looks like when we assign you these reports. You can see that red arrow shows that the status is not started. We will be assigning these reports by the end of the day today, and you should all have access to these reports. If you have someone else in your office who needs access to the report, um, uh, we can give you the instructions of how to add them to your account if you have more than one person who's your LZA. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mandy, who's going to go over the instructions and the different sections of the annual report. Uh, thanks, Kate. And uh, as Kate, I'll just reiterate, it's great to see everybody and have you with us today. And so let's just get into what the report is going to be about. So as you may remember, there were quite a few changes made last year. We have not made any changes this year except for um, one tiny one, and that was to accommodate uh, your your data going in. So let's just get into this. So um, many of you have done this for quite a few years. Some of you may be new at it. So when you open up the CAMS, it's going to be broken down into various sections. And the first section is going to go over just the typical zone information where we do need the local zone administrator contact name, um, the email. And also, if that has been a change during this reporting period, just let us know yes or no. And of course, if you have an alternative zone administrator, uh, contact person and email. And then also the last time you had an amendment and what that approval date was, we do ask that you enter that into the report. And here is um, probably one of the number one things we need to reiterate is, are you thinking about a zone amendment in this calendar year? If you are, then of course we would want you to mark yes, but just as a reminder that you do need to meet with a DHCD person, either Kate, myself, and Tori, to go over that amendment process, and that has to be done before you have any type of public hearings. So just as a reminder, be sure to contact us if you are even thinking about working on any type of boundary or incentive amendment so that we can set up a meeting in the next month or so. Continuing on with that zone information, we do ask you all to um, reiterate that zone acreage. So if it's a joint zone, uh, the list acreage that's subject to your locality only. And then, of course, how many non-contiguous areas? Just as a reminder, you can have up to three non-contiguous areas. So you would want to list whether you have one, two or three. And then also we do ask that you attach your zone maps to the email or to the report as well. Um, attach them as either a PDF or a JPEG or JPEG. And you may want to go ahead and take a look. Um, many of you are familiar with the VEDP website that has your maps, and we might be able to drop, we can make sure we include that when we send out this presentation. 
I would suggest you take a look at that and then if that is seems incorrect for any reason, then get in touch with us so that we can make sure that those shape files are sent to the appropriate person at VDP and get that updated for you. And just as a reminder, you can only upload one file for that. So if you have multiple zone maps, you're going to need to be you're, you're going to need to put those into one file or compress those into a zipped file. Section two does go into more of the administration, what's been happening within the zone. Uh, I'm sorry, or just information about the zone itself. So we do ask that you should, you would include a zone description. Um, many of you probably have this already that you've utilized for marketing materials or in your previous years. We do ask that you update it if you had for those localities that had any of the 2023 amendments that were taken took place, just make sure that you do um, include that. You also, there is a location we're asking you to upload your zone ordinance attachment. Uh, if this is a link, you would want to put it, I, you know, just make sure you're providing where we're going to that, um, provide any resolutions that authorize administration of the local incentives. Uh, zone marketing materials attachment. This, uh, you know, a lot of times you all are upload or you're updating them and, and sometimes they're not. If you have provided to us the marketing materials in the past and they're the exact same from last year, you're not required to upload that. But if you have updated anything, we do ask that you provide those updated materials again in either a PDF or a zipped folder file if it's multiple documents. You can take screenshots of websites or provide us links to different websites, uh, scan in brochures, flyers, anything of that nature. And just as a side note, if you do not have any marketing materials and you would like something, please reach out to us because we do have some standardized materials that we can share with you to be able to utilize in your locality. The next one is going to be zone planning. So are there any upcoming plans or objectives? Again, any amendments, marketing projects you're working on that you want to share with us that you feel is relevant to your zone and what you are looking to accomplish in that zone? And then, of course, we want to make sure that you uh, share with us any assistance requests that you have. This is also uh, an area that we're looking for some feedback because Kate and I have been working along with uh, Tori support to be able to put out some training for later this year. As you can imagine, the beginning of the year is kind of busy for us with the grant, but we are going to be looking at some different trainings uh, in the upcoming end of the year, hopefully with the renewals and amendments and maybe some marketing. So if you have some assistance requests that you're looking for that's either individual or you think would be beneficial to other local zone administrators, please feel free to share that with us in that particular question. Moving on to the zone activities, so this is where you're going to report that information about what's been happening within the zone. Now, again, this might be major projects that are happening uh, with or close to the zone. So, for instance, you may have some infrastructure that while it did not fall within the zone boundaries, it will benefit those businesses that are located within the zone, you would want to include a brief description or summary about that. So this can be um, public improvements made during the calendar year. Again, just as a reminder, you're looking at things that happened during calendar year 2023 uh, as far as reporting into this particular uh, annual report. You can also include um, anything that happened within the boundaries, major improvements that took place, uh, any, like I said, anything outside the zone. And this can include water, sewer, roads, uh, broadband, streetscape, landscaping, parks, schools, all of that. We do also ask that you include any other DHC projects that you may be working on that can have a cohesive effect on that enterprise zone. So might be some CDBG, you might have received an IRF for a, a building, a community business launch, any of those types of things we do ask. And I don't remember, Kate, do we have a, I think we have maybe a 1500 character limit on that. 
And yeah, I think it's a 1500 character limit. So I do very highly recommend that you type this out into maybe a Word document, count your characters, and then copy and paste it over. Continuing on with other zone activities, we do realize that there are people or businesses and companies within the zone that just choose not to participate for whatever reason that may be. And so if you are aware of those companies, we do ask that you share that information as much as you can. Maybe a reason why the business or investor chose not to apply for the enterprise zone, especially the state incentives, if they were eligible for that. And then if um, if you have zone in activity, so if you had no state applications that were submitted over the last year, uh, what are some strategies or other concepts that you'll utilize to increase usage of the zone? And just as a reminder, and we'll get into this in a minute, we will be uh, we will also send you some utilization information. So that's going to be needed for the last year. So we're. We're going to have to wait until we get everything approved for that and get all the grants out, but that'll be coming out as soon as we have that together. So this was the uh, forum that we went to last year. Some of you may recognize and remember it uh, much easier if you're if you're been with a local zone administrator for quite a few years. You remember we had that four page form and luckily we went to this one tab form that just you, that where we're asking you to list and report on your local zone utilization. One of the things you all asked for last year, because some of you had more needed more lines or you needed the, the cells to be larger. So this sheet should be unlocked. This will be emailed to you in addition to a copy of the presentation. So you have that whenever we are finished with this this webinar. So again, if you take a look at this, we're looking for your locality name. What is the zone number? Some of you are responsible for multiple zones. So of course, you'd be completing this uh, maybe two or three times if it's based off of joint zones, because you may be the point of contact for that. Give us a brief summary of what that particular incentive is. Um, and then, of course, over here in the blue, we're wanting to know how many businesses took advantage of that, what the value of that was, those incentive was. So if it was a waived building permit, you may would have 15 permits that were waived at a value of you know, $4,500. And hopefully you also are tracking what that leveraged. So that may have been resulting in $500,000 in building permit or in qualified what we would call qualified real property investment or the real property investment. So if you have any questions about that, especially if you're a first time user, please feel free to reach out to us so we can go over that in more detail. Continuing on the job creation and investment data, so job creation information. So we just want you to provide a summary of what job creation that includes any significant business activity. This is within the zone itself. So if you remember the previous section, we of course ask you to talk about any type of infrastructure or other things that support the zone. This is going to be just within the zone boundaries. So what type of business activity did happen? Were there new businesses, expansions, or was there any type of downsizing that happened that we should be aware about that may have happened in that area and you want to share. And then, of course, the private investment. So this information will be provided by our office after we finalize the grant applications. So the total amount of enterprise zone grant funds that were allocated to businesses in your zone in the past grant year. Um, and again, like we said, we're finishing that up and we will get that information to you as soon as we can. And do we have a next slide, Kate? Sorry, you froze for a second on my end. Sorry if that's oh, sorry. Saw everything. No, that's okay. Are we back? Did we get all the information in? Okay. 
And then um, just finishing up, we do, of course, want to provide you the opportunity to share additional information, especially photos, stories, anything that you, you know, business owners have quotes or support of the program itself. And this can be about local incentives, state incentives, because we know how important those local incentives can be to your particular locality as well. And so please be sure to share that with us. Uh, there's a little uh, location for a narrative brief summary, and then you can, of course, upload any photos with that. And I'm going to turn it back over to Kate. Yeah, the next slide is, um, a, of course, a, a, a link to our state annual report from last year. That gives you a good idea of how we use the information that we collect in those local annual reports to go into our state report. The state report that we write is given to our policy office. They go over it and then they directly give that to the legislators who are in the Senate Finance and House Appropriations Committee. And hopefully they use that report to make decisions about funding for the enterprise zone. Um, so that's why it's really important that each locality um, submits a report with, with good data and information that we can use for our report as well. Our last slide is time for you all to ask questions. You can put those questions in the chat box or you can use the raise your hand feature at the top of your screen. There's a hand that says raise. You can hit that button and we can call on folks if there's any questions that need to be answered. While you're thinking about questions, I'll remind everyone that we will have those reports live in your CAMS login ready for you by the end of the day today. And I think I saw Mallory. Um, yes, Mallory. Hey, good morning, Kate. Thank you so much. I, um, I um, really appreciate all the work you all did last year in reformatting and tweaking the annual report so that the LZAs are collecting and providing the appropriate information and not excess information um, that uh, that really means a lot to us in the at the at the local level. So thank you very much for that. Um, quick question, and you may have covered it. Um, I know you're going to make the CAMS annual report live today, but the Excel spreadsheet that we typically get with our previous year's grant recipients, did you say that's coming as soon as you all disperse those checks? Yes, we usually send those out once after disbursement, so that'll be about a month from now. Okay, but before the reports do, right? That's right. Okay, great. Then my second question. Sorry, I was just going to remind everyone, Valerie, that's a good question. The reports are due once again on, as a good reminder, July 15th. So we'll get those out the first week of June after they are dispersed. Is it? it. No, not June. Goodness. Um, sorry, it's July, the first week in July. Okay. At the latest, we, we try to get it out before the end of June. Great. Thank you. Um, and then not necessarily part of the annual report, but you kind of alluded to it. Um, lots of zones are up for renew renewal this year, and that's a separate topic and a separate meeting, um, and that deadline's September 30th. But you did mention the change that the General Assembly made, and my understanding is all current zones got a additional four years and my if a is that right and b is that automatic as of right now or does that mean on the tail end after you do your renewals you get yet one more four-year renewal so it's actually a little bit different um, i'm gonna let tori explain this one because there's a lot to explain there was some a complicated thing that happened so i'll let tori handle that one how about that Sure, that's fine. Um, yes, yeah, so there were actually uh, two bills. There was a House bill and a Senate bill that um, both got signed by the governor that were a little different uh, from each other. So the House bill just gave everybody another five-year renewal, and then the Senate bill gave everybody a five-year renewal plus an additional four years after that. 
So due to the order in which they were signed, the Senate bill was signed second. So that is the one that actually goes into effect. So actually, every, as of right now, every locality will get an additional five year renewal. So you will have to submit a renewal request for those. So the ones that would have been expiring this year in 2024 will have to submit a renewal request. But then at the end of that five year period, it's an automatic four year additional period. So effectively, that gives everybody a 34 year zone <laughs> in length. So uh, it's a little difficult to kind of explain, but that's uh, the best way I could think of. So um, so yes, everybody will that still have to renew for that five years as of right now. And then um, those that would then be expiring in 2029 would then get the additional four years without having to, to submit a renewal request like you'll have to this year. Okay, well, I may send y'all a sidebar because we have a zone that was established in 15 for 10 years. We're get it, it currently we're, we're eligible prior to this General Assembly for three five year renewals. We're getting ready to do the first one. So now we're going to get another nine years on top of that. Yeah, but you would still do your still you're still up for renewal this year. So you still right. have to submit right. the renewal. Understood. So it doesn't I, change anything for anybody that would be up for renewal. It it just adds it on to the end. So it gives you four renewals plus four years. So right. But my boss and my city manager and my council are going to want to know what the maximum opportunity for extensions are. And so I, I'll send y'all a sidebar note. Thanks. Sure. Sounds good. Thank you, Mallory. Good question. And I'll, I'll just add on that we will we did not send it out before this, but we will be having that renewal training for those localities in June. So we'll send that invitation out in the next week or so. Yes, thanks, Mandy. We didn't want to, uh, to confuse anyone with the different invitations for different trainings. Um, I do see a question in the chat from Tim. I'm get, it says Tim D. I'm guessing that might be Tim Danielson. It says, are enterprise zone benefits available for a retail development? The answer is yes. So the real property investment grants are available for retail. However, the job creation grants are not available for retail. What other questions do you have? You can put them in the chat or you can raise your hand. And these can be questions that are not necessarily about the annual report. If you have a general enterprise zone question. I'm not seeing any others. I'll give everyone a, a few more seconds if you want to ask a question. Oh, this is Ellen in Bristol. Hi, Ellen, go ahead. Hey, I just have a question sort of about the renewals. I'm thinking if, if we were thinking about re revising our um, our area, that would probably be a good time to do it. Do you all agree with that when we do our renewal? Not necessarily. Um, are you, is, it depends on if you, if you are required to renew this year, I mean, you could do it. it I, I don't necessarily know that you have to do it at the same time. It's a lot for at the same time, I think. If you mm -hmm. if it's something that can wait until maybe just the beginning of next year, we do accept those amendments um, on a rolling basis throughout the year. The deadline is just to ensure that once you get it to us by that deadline, we can ensure that it's processed in that calendar year because those amendments are retroactive to the beginning of the year. Um, so if I was putting myself in your place as an LZA, um, I would probably do the renewal that's required and maybe hold off on the amendment until the first of next year. But that's just my opinion. You can do it either way. OK, well, thank you. I'm glad I asked. Sure. Let's see. Will there be an additional training date for the renewal? Um, we're only going to have one training date, Nicole, but it will be recorded and we will have that up and um, we will be posting the renewal manual. You can watch the webinar and of course you can reach out to us and we'll help you all through the process. Our goal is to help make the process as efficient and easy as possible for you all. We know that you all have a lot on your plates. Claire says, I may have just missed this, but what was the one change in this year's report? Um, I don't know, oh. Mandy. 
Go yeah, ahead. I think I said that and I probably said it a little bit out of turn, but the change was that we just unlocked the data spreadsheet so that you all would be able to add rows and or make, you know, allow the text that you wanted in that space to fit. So that's real. That was the only change is it should be unlocked when you get it later today. If you have trouble with it, just let us know. And that's that data spreadsheet where you enter your local zone utilization. Thanks, Mandy. Thanks. Any other questions? As a reminder, we'll have those annual reports in your CAMS available today. We're going to be sending out that sheet that Mandy just talks to, talked about, that Excel sheet with your job creation data. We're also going to include in an email that VEDP link to their GIS site. That is really helpful, especially if you're a smaller locality that doesn't necessarily have your own GIS layering of your enterprise zone at the local level. It's a great tool to be able to use, but it's really important that everybody makes sure that the information GIS has is up to date. It includes amendments from the past years. Every year we try to make sure that those localities that amend send us their GIS shape files, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. So if everyone could go on there and make sure that it's accurate, that would be wonderful. It'd be helpful to everyone. It's also helpful to VDP when they're talking to companies. They use that to see which companies are in the enterprise zone to kind of use that as, you know, one of the many uh available grants and incentives that they can offer to those companies. Any other questions before we wrap up? It looks like Mandy put the link to that GIS um, on the VEDP page in the chat. So thank you for that, Mandy. That's perfect. All right, if there are no other questions, um, I want to tell all of you, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today for the training. Um, you know that if you have any further questions or need any clarification, you can reach out to both myself and Mandy. And um, if we need to, we'll reach out to Tori for the support that we need to answer those questions. And um, we look forward to seeing you next month. I don't want to, Mandy, help back me up. I believe the renewal training is June 18th. That is correct, 10 June 18th at 10 a.m., yes. Okay, great. And we'll be sending out a meeting, Teams meeting invite for your calendar for that, and also, of course, reminder emails as well. And we'll be posting that recording as well as this one on our website and sending out a link to that. So thank you all so much, and have a great week.